Hi guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be talking about dual booting from two separate hard drives. I'm going to guide you through making a live bootable USB, the install onto the new hard drive and the setup once we're in the Linux operating system. So by the end of the video, when you start your computer, you will be greeted with a splash screen which gives you the option to either boot into Linux or Windows. So let's get to it. So the first thing we want to do is go to our web browser. Google, Linux Mint, it's this one here at the top, main page, and just here at the top it says Downloads tab, click on that. Alright, so there's a few different options available, we've got Cinnamon, Mate, KDE and XFCE. These are all just different desktop environments and all that means is that the desktop will look slightly different. Um, I prefer Mate. Uh, if you would like to have a look at them all and see which one you like the best, pause the video and have a look. If you're unsure, uh, I'd just go with Cinnamon. Uh, it's a great desktop environment and it's quite similar to Windows. So I'm going to pick Mate 64-bit. Um, and if you're unsure, if you have a 32-bit or 64-bit machine, if you go to Start and this PC, a RAM called My Computer, right-click Properties, and just here, where are we going? There we go. System type, 64 bit operating system, 64 bit processor. So 64 bit. So back to this page. I want to find Europe and United Kingdom. So I'll click on that, download that. Okay, so while that's downloaded, I'm going to open up another tab. Back to Google. I'm going to type in Rufus. And it's just this top one, just here, Rufus, create bootable USB drives, the easy way. So if we click that, scroll down a tad, here we go, Rufus 2.7, click that. Okay, so if you want to pause the video now and wait for your ISO to download, that would be a good idea. So the next step is to go to our downloads folder and we need to get Rufus we'll click that and we need to put in our USB okay so make sure you've got the right USB enabled here top on the device and if you come down here to create bootable disk image we want this little box here Click here to select an image and go to your downloads and pick your ISO. Mine hasn't finished downloading yet, so I will just pick um, a random one just to show you the process. Uh, all you have to do is click start, right ISO image mode recommended, click OK, click OK again, and then that will. Uh, install the ISO onto your USB, giving you a live USB. Okay, so now that's finished, what we'll do is uh, we're going to have to boot into the BIOS um, and boot from our USB flash disk or flash drive, even. Uh, and then I'll show you the installation process. Alright, so I've just booted into my uh, BIOS. For me, I have to press F2 while it's on the ASUS, ASUS splash screen while the computer is starting up. For you, it might have to press a different key depending on what brand of motherboard you have. Uh, but to boot off USB, all I have to do on my ASUS motherboard is come down here to boot menu and then click general USB flash disk. Uh, but while we're in the BIOS, before we do this, uh, we need to change a couple of settings. So for me, I have to go to advanced mode. Hopefully you have something similar. And we want to go to the boot tab. Scroll down. And we want to change our boot option priorities. And in boot option number one, uh, we want to put in or select uh, the hard drive that we are about to install Linux onto because we want Linux to boot first and I'll explain why we want that later. So I know I'm going to be installing 
mine onto this 240 gigabyte SSD. So I put that boot option number two. Doesn't really matter. Uh, boot option. I'll just leave that as CD. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and the other thing that we need to do is if you've got a secure boot option, change that from Windows UEFI to other OS. Okay, so if we now that we've done those, if we go back, go back into easy mode, boot menu, and then general USB, and then we'll boot into the live USB. All right, so this is what you'll see when you boot into your live USB. Feel free to have a look around and see if you see if you like it. If you don't, you don't have to install it. It's as easy as that. So come down here, make sure you connect to the internet. If it's wired, you should connect straight away. And this is also where you come to connect to your Wi-Fi. Okay. So let's in, click over here, install Linux Mint. We go English, select your language. Continue. All right, so this is the part where you've got to be careful. So if you're like me and you disconnected your hard drive, no other hard drive will show up here. If you've got two or more hard, two or more hard drives, it will show up here. So make sure that you click the right one because there's no going back once you've erased the disk. So click install now. Continue. Okay, yep. Yeah. That's fine. Alright, let's so put in your name. It could be your full name if you like. Put in your password. Continue. Alright, and that'll start copying the files. And feel free to browse the system. You can go on the internet, you can open the terminal, you can do whatever you like. It's still a fully functioning live USB. You can do whatever you like while that's installing, which I think is much better than sitting through a Windows installation, that's for sure. Alright, so that's finished installing now, so you can either continue testing or click restart now and um, keep an out because it will prompt you to remove the USB because if you don't, it's likely to boot back into the USB live installation. So what we'll do now is I'll restart so we boot it back into Linux and you may have noticed it didn't give you an option to boot into Windows. So here's how we're going to sort that. Oh, and I know that my desktop looks a bit different. That's because I've just been messing around getting it the way I like it. I do like the look um, of a Mac. If you would like to know how to do this, give me a comment and I'll, I'll do a video. It's really simple to do. So the first thing we want to do is go to Applications, System Tools, and then down to Terminal. And the first command that we're going to put in will look for other operating systems connected to the computer on different hard drives. So we're going to type in sudo space os dash prober. Put in your password. You set up a moment ago. And there we go. Just like that, it's found our Windows 8 hard drive. If for uh, some reason yours doesn't appear, turn off your computer and just make sure it's all connected properly, all, the, all your cables are connected. Log back in and try again. I've never had a problem where it hasn't found or detected my Windows hard drive. So the next thing we are going to do will allow us to change the settings for our grub menu which will appear on startup. So we're going to type in sudo pluma forward slash etc default forward slash grub and here we go this is the text file containing all the settings for the grub menu now all we have to do is go to the fourth one down here grub timeout change it from 0 to 10 like just like I've done if you want 15 20 seconds you can change it how you wish but I find that 10 is more than enough to more than enough time to choose which you want to be into and just above it here if you change this from true to false, it will actually show you how much time you've got left, which I find very helpful. So once you've changed these two here, all you have to do is click save. And there's just one final command, which is sudo 
update dash grub and this will update the grub's text file. And there we go, found Windows 8. So now the grub menu has the option to boot into my Windows 8 operating system. And it's as easy as that. Uh, if you have any questions, put it down in the comment section and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can.